topic of our discussion is corporal labs, and I will emphasize on the Dewhurst algorithm for corporal labs and uh, RCOG guideline. Okay, so let us turn to the Dewhurst um, algorithm for the corporal labs. Okay, you can see on the top that uh, pathway of the care of corporal labs is explained here. Okay, so first of all, when we uh, assess the patient and we find that she has got the corporal labs, we will put the patient in the left lateral position. And we will give 100% oxygen by mask. Then we will try to replace the cord in the vagina but avoid handling a cord as much as possible and discontinue oxytocin if it is present. Okay. So after taking these steps, what comes the next? Okay. The next step is assessment of the fetal viability. Okay. How would we assess the fetal viability? We will check the fetal heart rate on PNR or Doppler or CTG. We want to know whether the fetus is alive or not. Okay, so look to the uh, right side that we have no fetal heart. In that case, await spontaneous delivery. Why to give scar to the patient in that case? So the better step would be to await spontaneous delivery. Okay, now coming to the uh, left side. Okay, you see that uh, fetal heart rates are positive. Yes, the baby is alive. Okay, now we will check whether the cervix is dilated or not, whether the fetus is cephalic or not. Okay, so that is important. Okay, so we found that yes, the patient is fully dilated. What we will do now? Will we do cesarean section? No, we will consider when choose or forcep if easy delivery is anticipated. Okay, we will check which is more appropriate and that depends upon the whole clinical examination okay now if we find that no the um, cervix is not fully dilated or vagina delivery is deemed inappropriate or unsuccessful or maybe the baby is not cephalic whatever the reason may be what we will check we will check if the fetal heart rate is normal or not okay if we find that yes the fetal heart rates are okay then make an emergency for uh, make an arrangement for emergency cesarean section, but that would be urgent um, category two cesarean section. On the other hand, we find that we have no fetal heart rate or fetal heart rate is abnormal. Then relieve pressure on the cord by first of all the knee, elbow or left treated position with the Chandelberg. Secondly, we will do manual elevation of the presenting part. Then get the dries and fill the bladder with the 500 ml of the normal saline and then clamp the catheter. Okay. After that, we will check this. Does the fetal heart rate improve or not? If the fetal heart rate improve, then we will make an arrangement for grade 2 or category 2 cesarean section. And also remember to unclamp the catheter and drain the bladder before surgery. That is also very important. But if we find that no fetal heart rate stays abnormal, what we will do, we will prepare for emergency cesarean section that is category 1. And also remember to unclamp the catheter and drain the bladder before surgery. So with that, we um, completed the Dewhurst algorithm for the corpulax. Now come to the RCUG guideline, very important points. First of all, the clinical issues. What factors are associated with a higher chance of the cord prolapse? Okay, clinicians need to be aware of the several clinical factors associated with the cord prolapse. That might be high hair, that might be multiple pregnancy, that might be breech presentation polyhydramnios, whatever the cause is, the clinician should assess the patient in a proper way. Another question is that can core presentation be detected antenatally? Okay, uh, the answer is that routine uh, ultrasound examination is not sufficiently sensitive or specific for identification of the core pr presentation antenatally and should be performed to predict the increased probability of the core prolapse unless in the context of the research setting. Selective ultrasound screening can be considered for the woman with a breech presentation in the term who are considering vaginal delivery. Now, in the introduction uh, and background epidemiology, one important thing is that in case of the breech presentation, the incidence is higher, that is one person. So about that, we have an exam question that what is the incidence of the cord prolapse with the breech presentation? So we have different options and the answer is one person. Coming to the guideline again, can cord prolapse or its factor be avoided okay about that it's written that with the transverse oblique or unstable lie elective admission 
at um, to the hospital at 37 means of gestation should be discussed and women in community should be advised to present urgently if there are signs of the labor or suspicion of the membrane rupture so in that way we can avoid the uh, cord prolapse okay so uh, elective admission after 37 weeks secondly women with a non cephalic presentation and pre term pre labor rupture membrane should be recommended in patient care okay those patients should also be admitted then artificial rupture membrane should be avoided whenever possible if presenting part is mobile uh, and or high now sometimes it is very necessary to rupture membrane with a high presenting part in that case there should be an there should be arrangement in place for immediate cesarean section another important thing is that upper pressure on the presenting part should be kept to minimum in the woman during vaginal examination and other obstetric intervention in the context of the rupture membrane because of the risk of the upward displacement of the presenting part and cord prolapse rupture of the membrane should be avoided if on vaginal examination cord is felt below the presenting bar when the cord presentation is diagnosed in established labor cesarean section is usually indicated now when should cord prolapse be suspected cord presentation as prolapse should be excluded at every vaginal examination in the labor and after spontaneous rupture of membrane if the risk factors are present in addition the national guidelines for the fetal heart rate monitoring in the labor the fetal heart rate should be auscultated after every vaginal examination in labor after spontaneous rupture of the membrane and cord prolapse should be suspected when there is abnormal fetal heart rate pattern especially if such changes come in soon after membrane rupture either spontaneous or artificial now another thing is that speculum or digital examination should be performed when the cord prolapse is suspected and when spontaneous rupture of the membrane occurs there is normal fetal heart rate monitoring and there is there are no risk factors for the cord prolapse then the routine vaginal examination is not indicated now what is the optimal initial management of the cord prolapse in a fully equipped hospital setting when the cord prolapse is diagnosed before full dilatation assistance should be immediately called and preparation made for immediate birth in the theater there are insufficient data to evaluate the manual replacement of the cord prolapse above the presenting part to allow the continuation of the labor this practice is not recommended to prevent vasospasm there should be minimal handling of the loops of the cord lying outside the vagina now to prevent the cord compression it is recommended that the presenting part be elevated either manually or by filling the urinary bladder cord compression can be further reduced by mother adopting the knee chest or the left lateral preferably with the head down and pillow under the left hip position now tocolysis can be considered while preparing for the cesarean section if there are persistent fetal heart rate abnormalities after attempts to prevent compression mechanically particularly when the birth is likely to be delayed although the measures described above are potentially useful during preparation for the birth they should not delay in results in unnecessary delay now what is the uh, optimal mode of the birth with a cord prolapse cesarean section is the recommended mode of the delivery in case of the cord prolapse when vaginal birth is not imminent in order to prevent the hypoxic acidosis okay so we will go for cesarean section and what type of cesarean section that is also important we may have category 1 cesarean section we may have category 2 cesarean section so in what case is category 1 emergency cesarean section indicated a category 1 cesarean section should be performed with the aim of achieving birth within 30 minutes or less if the cord prolapse is associated with the suspicious or pathologically fetal heart rate pattern but without compromising maternal safety okay we have suspicious or pathological um ctg but there is no issue of maternal safety so we can go for for category 1 cesarean section but category 2 cesarean section can be considered for the woman in home fetal heart rate pattern is normal but continuous assessment of the fetal heart rate stress stressing is also essential okay sometime fetal heart rate pattern may be normal but you have to assess it continuously if ctg becomes abnormal recategorization to category 1 birth should be immediately considered 
then discussion with anesthetist should take place to decide on the appropriate form of anesthesia regional anesthesia should be considered in consultation with an experienced anesthetist verbal consent is satisfactory for the category 1 cesarean section then vaginal birth in most cases operative can be attempted at full dilatation if it is anticipated that birth would be accomplished quickly and safely uh, using standard technique and taking care to avoid impingement of the cord when possible breech extraction is approx- appropriate under some circumstances for example for internal pediatric version for the second twin a practitioner competent in the resuscitation for the newborn should attend all the births that follow the cord prolapse paired cord blood samples should be taken for ph and based excess measurements now what is the optimal ma- ma- uh, management in the community setting midwives should assess the risk of the cord prolapse for the woman requesting home birth or births in the centers without facilities for immediate cesarean section and at the start of the labor in the community women with a known cord prolapse should be advised by telephone to assume the knee chest face down position while awaiting for the hospital transfer during emergency ambulance transfer the knee chest position is potentially unsafe and exaggerated same position left flexed with a pillow under hip should be used all the women with a cord prolapse should be advised to be transferred to the nearest consultant lad unit for the birth unless an immediate vaginal examination by the competent professionals reveals that spontaneous vaginal birth is imminent the presenting part should be elevated during transfer either manually or by using bladder distension it is recommended that the community midwives carry a fully catheter for this purpose and equipment for infusion fluid infusion to prevent vasospasm there should be minimal handling of the loops of the cord lying outside the vagina what is the optimal management of the cord prolapse at the threshold of viability expectant management should be discussed for the cord prolapse complicating pregnancies with the gestational age at the threshold of viability that is 23 plus to 24 plus 6 weeks of gestation clinician should be aware that there is the no evidence to support replacement of the cord in the uterus when the prolapse occurs at or before the threshold of viability women should be counseled on both continuation and termination of the pregnancy following cord prolapse at the threshold of viability now should delayed cord clamping be used for after cord prolapse delayed cord clamping can be considered if the baby is uncompromised at birth immediate resuscitation should take priority over delayed cord clamping when the baby is unwell at birth now clinical governance we have to explain the event okay an opportunity to discuss the event should be offered to the woman possibly with her companion in the labor at a mutually convenient time training all the staff involved in the maternity care should receive training in the management of the obstetric emergencies including the management of the cord prolapse and training of the cord prolapse should be multidisciplinary and include the team rehearsals clinical incident reporting clinical incident forms should be submitted for all the cases of the cord prolapse documentation um, pre formatted sheet should be considered for recording of the clinical events related to the cord prolapse now this chart this algorithm has also been taken from our cg guide cord mean consider organize help relieve pressure and decision for the birth consider at every vaginal examination in labor we have to consider if abnormal fetal heart rate with a spontaneous rupture of membrane after membrane rupture with the risk factors organize help obstetrician and midwives and esthetist and peri operative team neonatal team relieve pressure manually elevate presenting part of full bladder uh, and encourage into left leg position with a head down and pillow placed under the left hip or knee chest position consider toe collapses then the seat now the scene for the birth evidence transfer to the hospital labor ward and assess and assess and assist birth by the quick means and urgency of the birth depending on the fetal heart rate and this gestational age and if cesarean section consider if gestational anesthesia appropriate now coming to the exam question when umbilical cord occurs in the community setting what is the incidence what is the increased risk in the perinatal mortality okay it is 10 times now another question 
at 28 weeks of gestation. Woman presents in spontaneous rupture of brain at 41 weeks of gestation with a cephalic presentation in her third pregnancy. Having had two previous normal births, at the onset of the second stage, she ruptures her membrane and the fetal heart rate decelerates. Vaginal examination confirms a black cord prolapse with the fetal heart rate in direct occipital anterior below the level of the ischial spine. What is optimal management? Okay. Anticipation of normal delivery, encouragement to push um, and bladder filling to displace the fetal heart and replacement of the prolapsed umbilical cord, category 1 cesarean section under GA, digital elevation of the fetal head and category 2 cesarean section with the regional anesthesia, immediate operative vaginal delivery with the choose extraction. So the answer is immediate vaginal delivery with the ventus extraction. Okay, because the fetus is fetal head is below the level of the ischial spine okay another question a 29 year old para 2 with a booking bmi of 56 presents at 39 weeks of gestation in the labor she found to be four centimeter dilated and contracting three uh, into ten regularly the presenting Presentation is uncertain and obstetrics ST3 is called to confirm the fetal presentation. During the ultrasound of the woman, she had a spontaneous rupture to the membrane. Ultrasound suggests the foot link breach presentation examination. The woman is dysmorphic looking. Now, which an examination confirmed? Four centimeter dilatation, but with a cord prolapse. Okay. An emergency call is made. The ST3, anesthetist ST4, consultant of obstetrician and anesthetist uh, come in from home. The ST3 examination includes melampathy 3, thyromental distance 5 cm. CTG has a baseline rate of 140, variability greater than 5, and no acceleration and variable deceleration with a fast recovery lasting less than 1 minute uh, with every contraction. What would be the most appropriate immediate course of action? A. Continuous CTG allows the labor to progress and consider fetal uh, electrodes. B. Fill the bladder with the 750 ml of saline. Consider tocolysis and transfer to the trader and time regional anesthetics for the cesarean section. C. Is fill the bladder with 750 ml saline. Transfer to the third immediate um, and time regional anesthetic for cesarean section. So difference between B and C is that in B we have tocolysis added. In D, uh, manually lift the fetal heart, uh, fetal head to immediately transfer to the theater for immediate general anesthetics and category 1 is the resection. And E is manually replace the cord, consider tocolysis and external cephalic version. The answer is that of B. Okay, first of all, we have to fill the blood with 750 ml saline, consider tocolysis and transfer to the theater and attempt regional anesthetic for cesarean section. Okay, another exam question. A 37 year old primary care doctor attend to the labor ward complaining of the irregular contraction. She is 38 weeks pregnant at the ultrasound scan performed at 36 weeks gestation. Showed the placenta to be posterior and high with a normally grown fetus, uh, normally grown baby, and she conceived by IVF. And CTG shows the baseline a heart rate of 140 weeks per minute, variability 10 to 15, acceleration are present, no deceleration. She is contracting uh, once every 10 minutes. The general examination showed the cervix to be partially effaced and uh, dilated 2 cm with intact membrane. The head is 5 by 5 palpable. All other her observations are normal. Which of the following option would you do next? Admit her to antenatal ward, admit her to the labor ward and keep her on continuous monitoring. Admit her to the labor ward and perform artificial rupture membrane. Admit her to the labor ward and book for a category 2 cesarean section. Reassure that all um, now a community midwives phones you as patient with the planned home but has uh, gone into the labor but examination revealed the car prolapse so we have different option advice in position while awaiting ambulance transfer to the hospital advice knee just face position while awaiting um, ambulance transfer to the hospital operative vaginal delivery category one cesarean section category two cesarean section the answer is b advice knee just face down position while awaiting